Hey guys, DMV Solar Rider back with another video. Today's probably gonna be a little shorter than is the historical norm, but I wanted to give you my first impressions of my HJC i90. Let's hit it. So right off the top, uh, we're limited to this camera angle because I haven't outfitted this helmet for uh, modal vlogging or anything. I don't know if I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna use one of my older helmets for all that. Hopefully the audio sounds okay. Kind of cram the microphone and the ear pad. We'll see how it goes. And one other disclaimer, what you're seeing down here isn't me, it's the jacket. Let's just be clear about that. Thank you. And of course I had to put the camera on the right because my big ass drink holder on the left here is way too big to have a camera next to it. And, and that's what it's actually called, the big ass drink holder by Ciro 3 d Excellent. I'll give you a demonstration later. But in my new non-scheduled channel, I've actually been looking forward to filming this video for a while now. Again, not a review, just wanted to share my initial first impressions about the helmet. Because in short, I'm pretty dazzled by it. So as I get into this helmet, uh, keep in mind my two old helmets, one is an Icon Air Flight and the other is a Shoei GT Air 2. I think the fairest comparison is between the, the HJC and the Shoei. The Shoei GTR 2 is the full face version of the Neotech 2. And while I've never worn a Shoei Neotech, you know, at least I have something close enough in terms of comfort, quiet, all the stuff you think about. And I think that's the most appropriate comparison for this helmet. And right off the top, I'm just going to say it. You know, I spent, I think, $700 on my Shoei, $650 on my Shoei. It's a good helmet. This helmet cost me. $239 before taxes. It's worth its weight in gold when you compare it to a far more expensive Shoei. And you know, the things I was looking to improve upon with my experience in my Shoei was a better visor, better ventilation, and that's pretty much the primary thing. So let's start with kind of foundational items, the look. This helmet looks great. It's red, white, and blue. It's kind of got a matte finish to it. I dig it. When I bought my Shoei, which is black with a red stripe down, I really didn't tend to get a black helmet. It just happened to be the best available at the time, so I got it. In terms of size, uh, this is a small. I'm a small and a showy. They fit comparably in terms of their size charts. Comfort. The helmet is very comfortable. Not a single pressure point after wearing the helmet for hours at a stretch. I don't take it off and have a sore forehead, sore spots on the back. My ears are totally comfortable. Is it as comfortable as a showy GT Air 2? No. The materials aren't quite as plush, not quite as smooth uh, for long riding against your skin, but they're not uncomfortable either. In terms of the visor, far more satisfied with the visor on my HJC than my Shoei. On the Shoei, for whatever reason, I could never easily open and close the visor. Opening it was tough, closing it I pretty much had to push down from the top of the visor to get it to click in over the gasket. The HJC, not an issue. Opens easily, closes easily, snaps right into place. Very satisfied with that. In terms of your field of view, it's a pretty traditional visor opening. You know, it's kind of that oval look. No different than the showy, but it's fine. Internal sun visor, as you can see, the mechanisms on the left works just fine. You raise it, it clicks into the helmet, lower it, comes right down, no problem. I'm very partial to internal sun visors. I would say the number one reason I decided to get this helmet and, and retire the showy for my road trips is ventilation. You know, I've been wearing that Shoei for, a year, for three years now and the first summer I started riding, I mean, you could have put me on a motorcycle in a garage sized oven and put it on, you know, nuclear and I would have been content. I would have been so happy riding that bike in that helmet. I wouldn't even notice the heat, but you know, the longer I've ridden, the more miles I've gotten, the more things like that kind of get to you. And I took a road trip uh, earlier this summer down to Florida, and when I was riding through South Carolina and Georgia, it was in the middle of a heat wave. You know, 100 degrees, 105 degrees, 100% humidity, really, really tough temperatures. And it really got to me wearing the showy. Got a vent on the top, got a vent on the chin. They both work easily, easy enough to find them with a the glove on, not a problem. What I would say about the ventilation in this helmet 
compared to the Shoei, it's superior so far. The weight of the helmet. I would say it's comparable to the GTR 2 Maybe a little lighter. GTR 2 is not a light helmet. Um, th there's nothing about the helmet that, you know, uh, I'm disappointed with in terms of its overall weight. Uh, again, I've, I've worn the GTR 2 for three years. That's definitely a heavy helmet. So, you know, the fact that this is the same or a little lighter, no issues. The last thing I would talk about is kind of the quiet of the helmet. I have no idea how this audio is gonna sound. I'm not wearing earplugs right now. I can totally hear my music through my uh, Senna without a problem. You know, my icon, that was always a problem. I would have to put the volume up max and I could barely hear anything. In the showy, it was so quiet that I would have to have the volume at no more than like the mid-level, number five out of 10, where I blow out my eardrums. Uh, the HJC is kind of a, a happy medium. You know, the Senna on Max is more than loud enough to hear it at the highest speeds on the highway, so that's an improvement over the Icon. It's definitely not as quiet as the Shoei, but it's quiet. And, you know, that brings me to the last piece of the helmet, which is the modular chin bar. So far in my experience, raising and lowering the chin bar, easy peasy. Uh, it's not difficult, it's not a struggle, goes right up, comes right back down and snaps into place. Doesn't take any effort whatsoever. The only issue I'm having is the chin curtain sometimes gets folded up in front of my chin. I mean, if that's my biggest complaint, I think I'm doing okay. And that's only sometimes. And having just stopped to do a battery change, one thing I didn't even think about when I was thinking about getting a modular, makes motovlogging a hell of a lot easier. I mean, if you don't have to take your helmet off and undo your mic just to get some air, you're doing all right. But let's be clear, when it comes to the modular nature of the helmet, you know, I don't plan to be riding down the highway with the bar up. But in the morning, there are some things you can do that are pretty sweet, like drink your coffee. Let's be real, you can't beat that. So I'm pretty satisfied with the modular helmet. I'm satisfied with the helmet in all respects. And I'm even more satisfied with it given its price. When you clicked on the link to the video, you probably saw my thumbnail and I was standing next to the bike in a, a t-shirt. And that's something I wanted to touch on briefly. In my three years of riding, you know, I, I, I gear up. You know, I'm, I'm kind of safety conscious. I'm uh, definitely pain conscious. <laughs> if I can protect myself from having a real effed up day, as Psycho Cruiser would say, I'm going to do it. You know, within reason, I'm not wearing the airbag vest or any of that nonsense. But, you know, this experience I had riding through South Carolina and Georgia in June was so god awful. I mean, you know, what happened was, you know, I got down into South Carolina. I was having a great ride, just an awesome day. I was in my mesh jacket not a problem and then I hit some stop and go traffic kind of in the southern portion of South Carolina and all of a sudden out of nowhere that heat just hit me hit me like a ton of bricks and you know I started navigating away from the highway to get away from traffic and I'm on little back roads and I'm just feeling worse and worse and when I you know when you're riding your bike on a hot day you stick your arm out you're gonna feel that cool breeze on your skin or through your gloves, whatever. And there was none of that. Anytime I put my arm out, it was just hot. And it felt like there was so much hot air passing through the bike. I actually thought something was wrong with the bike. You know, I had so much heat around me and heat kind of welling up underneath and inside my helmet, my showy. I honestly was like, well, the temperature gauge on the bike has to be broken. There's gotta be something wrong with it. I've never felt discomfort like this on this bike and the whole time I'm thinking well it can't be like heat exhaustion because I ride in high temperatures and high humidity in the DMV all the time well it was just heat exhaustion
And, you know, after a few hours of feeling this, I almost passed out on the bike, long story short. Uh, but back to the thumbnail, you saw that I'm wearing a t-shirt. When I was experiencing this uh, heat exhaustion, whatever it was, I finally just said, screw it. I took my jacket off, my mesh jacket, and rode without upper body protection for the first time since I got my license. I'm not gonna lie, it's been really hard to put that jacket back on ever since. Um, it felt so good to ride a motorcycle without a big heavy jacket on that I'm really struggling to convince myself to put that jacket back on on days when it's not particularly hot. And so, you know, when I took that picture, I was just zooming around out to West Virginia in a t-shirt. <laughs> I have no problem with AtGat. I've been an AtGat guy for my entire riding career to date until this experience. And now apparently I'm not, at least not right now on a hot day. That jacket's gonna come off. And for me, because when I say I almost passed out on my bike, I'm not exaggerating. I was basically doubled over like this, pulled into that last gas station parking lot and ran into their beer cooler and literally sat there for an hour just drinking fluids, you know, Gatorade and water. And had I not done that, had I, had I tried to continue riding, I probably would have fallen right off the bike. And that's kind of been my viewpoint since the end of June. You know, yeah, I want to be protected. I don't want to have to need the protection because I pass out from heat or something like that. That's why I have that picture in the t-shirt and I've had pictures like that on Instagram or on the community page. Since then, it's why I decided to get a modular helmet because I wanted to get something with a lot more ventilation for hot days. And again, the showy ventilation issues have been a challenge for a while now. But that experience just kind of like put it over the top. Okay, I need a better solution. And so far, the HJC seems like it's that solution. We'll see. Uh, I'm riding down to Florida for Thanksgiving. It's obviously not going to be hot. I won't have to worry about heat issues like that. But at least I'll, I'll be able to get a, a better sense of the helmet in all other respects on a real long ride down to Florida. Because I do that ride in a day. I don't, I don't usually stop overnight. But that's today's video guys, just wanted to share my excitement on the HJC, a $239 helmet that so far is worth every penny, and I uh, wanted to talk a bit about riding in high temperatures, you got to protect yourself. Sometimes, and I know this may not be for everyone, but sometimes protecting yourself means being less protected. Alright guys, that's it for today, hope you guys are having a, a lovely fall, it's like the second day of fall, I'm already in my freaking winter jacket. It was like 50 degrees when I left the house this morning. But anyways, y'all stay safe out there, and I will see you when I see you. DMV Solar Rider is out.